Good morning and welcome to the Church of St. Barnabas. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I wish you all a very happy and blessed Thanksgiving. We have gathered here today to receive Thanksgiving and to give Thanksgiving for the many blessings that God has bestowed upon us and to keep our hearts open to know what God has in store for us today. We are indeed blessed to be able to come in peace in a world that is upset and without thanks. So we give thanks for that today, that you have indeed come here today to worship the Lord and to give thanks. And one of the ways that we give thanks is by singing praises to the Lord. As Jesus said to this individual, you have come and you have praised me and given thanks. And we give thanks as we sing our opening hymn, number 293, Your Hands, O Lord, in Days of Old. You alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. 
God's word, let us pray the collect. Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts for all your goodness and steadfast wills to use your bounty well, that the whole human family, today and in generations to come, may with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for today's readings. A reading from Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first fruit of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. He brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God, and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 100. All lands, summon to praise God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with glad hearts. Come into his presence and sing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. And enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. The Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And he makes him with all all the nations. Built to the building, Catherine Chapitre des Philippines. Réjouissez-vous toujours dans le Seigneur, et je le répète, réjouissez-vous. Que votre douceur soit tout connue. Que votre douceur soit connue de tout le monde. Le Seigneur est proche. Ne vous inquiétez de rien, mais en tout, toute chose, faire connaître vos besoins à Dieu par des prières et des supplications avec des actions de grâce. Et la paix de Dieu, qui surpasse toute intelligence, gardera vos cœurs et vos pensées en Jésus-Christ. Au reste, frères et sœurs, que tout ce qui est vrai, Tout ce qui est honorable, tout ce qui est juste, tout ce qui est pur, tout ce qui est amable, tout ce qui mérite l'approbation, 
et ce qui est vertueux et digne de louange, soit l'objet de nos pensées. Ce que je, Paul, vous avez appris, reçu et entendu, et ce que vous avez vu en moi, pratiquez-le, et le Dieu de paix sera avec vous. Parole du Seigneur.
and to allow your Holy Spirit to guide us in all that we say and do. Indeed, guide my words today with your words alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. To turn back, praising God. His text is taken from Luke 17. Luke 17, that wonderful story of where Jesus healed the ten lepers, the ten people who had that skin disease that affected them in so many ways, their looks, their appearance, what they could do and what they could not do. And the title for today's sermon comes from that text that could have been read today, where it says, He turned back, praising God, with a loud voice. And each and every one of you here today, here live, have come to praise God with a loud voice. Those of you who could not make it but are listening online through our various forms of recording and media, or those who are listening next Saturday morning at Leisure de Interior, have gathered together. They have turned back, praising God with a loud voice, or at least with a listening ear. But we have used the readings for Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Sunday or Thanksgiving Monday, and they're beautiful readings. Especially from Deuteronomy, it speaks of the first fruits and tithes. But what are the first fruits and tithes? We learned this a few months ago that when the farmers were planting, and here you have to realize that the Jews had traveled across deserts and they were finally in the promised land. Just as we who live in St. Lambert or in the surrounding area, it is the promised land, flowing with milk and honey and stop signs and all kinds of things. But we have been blessed as they were blessed. But what they were taught was that when they planted, the first buds that would come out, the shrubs, the vines, the fig trees, whatever it is that they were growing, they would put a little ribbon on it to say, this is the first fruit. And once it was time for harvest, they would go and harvest that first fruit, the first of what they would receive, and they would give it to God. And we are called to do the same thing. We are called to take the first fruits at the beginning of the week, to write it out, to put it in an envelope, and we are called to bring it in to the place where God has appointed for you to worship, wherever that is. It is true that there are many charities that we can support, and we are to support charities, but the Bible is very clear that we are to choose a place where God's name is preached, and praise, and we are to bring our first fruits in and give thanks. But that's a very physical. It's something, it's money, it's produce, it's... But I believe that what we give thanksgiving for today is much greater than the material things, as necessary as they are, as indicative of our own spiritual being is our givings. I think it's important that any organization knows where the givings are coming from and how they come in so that they can continue to fulfill the mandate of that organization, whether it's the golf club, the curling club, Costco, or even your church. Because when all of a sudden these givings stop coming, when people stop coming in and giving their gifts at the altar, there's a reason for that. There's a reason of perhaps a lack of thanksgiving or things have happened. But what I would like to dwell on today is the readings from John 6, where Jesus has done some great miracles. He's turned little into much. Are we not all called to turn little into much? He's taken a few loaves of bread and some fishes and he's fed 5,000, plus the women and children. But here he's walking and he's on the other side of the lake. He went to find some peace and some quiet and they caught up with him. And they're asking him for a sign. Give us a sign. People are always asking for a sign that we are in the will of God, that we are doing what God wants us to do, that we are effective. And Jesus says, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. 
You see, they've come seeking food to nourish their bellies because they're hungry. They've been out all day. Yesterday I was working again in the yard and Joyce came and said, lunch, do you want to eat some lunch? And oh, the bread and smoked salmon and capers and all oh, was delicious. What a wonderful lunch that was. But we are designed for more than just the physical food and that's what Jesus is talking about. That Jesus has said, for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. But they said, but Moses gave them bread of, the bread of heaven. And Jesus says, it wasn't Moses, it was God that gave you the bread of heaven. And I'd like to take a look at what this bread of heaven was. In Exodus 16, it tells us, when the sons of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. This was that bread of heaven that came down each day, the daily bread that came down each day and was scattered upon the, line, the land. And there are different explanations of what it was and how it was made up. But the people looked at it and they said, what is it? And the word for what is it is manu. And they began to call it manna. They looked at it and they said, what is this, using the word manu or manna, and eventually it became known as the food of the Jews in the desert. What is it? Imagine you're all sitting around your table today for Thanksgiving dinner. And you bring out all the food that's been brought in almost like a potluck. And people lay it all out and there's always one kid that says, what is it? We were watching Young Sheldon the other night. It's a silly little show, but Young Sheldon's parents are both out of work. They're in that stage of wondering. And so the mother, with all that she could, she serves hamburger helper. And Sheldon says, what is it? And the father says, yes, indeed, what is it? Is there any meat in that? So the Jews look at this food and they said, what is it? But we have come to know it as something different. And to know and understand what is this food, this, this daily bread that has been given to us, we simply need to look at our Lord's Prayer. Our Lord's Prayer that we will say today, that we will say often in times of good and in times of tragedy. Give us this day our daily bread. But does it mean the bread that the people were seeking, that bread to fill their bellies? Or is it of a higher power? To understand it, we need to look at the original text. The original text that was probably in Aramaic, because that's what Jesus spoke, but it was translated into Greek of the time. And there are two incidences when this is spoken of in the Gospels. One in Luke 11, verse 3, and Matthew 6, verse 11. The Greek words are arton epousion. And it's the only place where epousion, which is one word made from two, is used. Arton is bread, epousion, epu, which is above, greater than, higher, much higher, Uzion, that which is substance, substantial, or natural. So in other words, Jesus is saying, give us this supernatural, heavenly bread that is above what we understand and know. And in the early centuries, the great theologians, Jerome, translated into Latin. And some of you who go back to a Latin service would remember this. In Luke, he used panis quotidian, diem, which means your daily bread, quotidianum, a quotation, a, a, a quotient of bread. But in Matthew, it says, Panis super substanti alum. You can tell I didn't take Latin. And that's the real meaning of that it is a supernatural bread. 
Do we get the supernatural bread by going to the local depanur or to Costco where they serve four rolls in one package? I believe the supernatural bread comes through prayer, through thanksgiving, through supplication. Isaiah 55 says, everyone who thirsts comes to the water and you who have no money, come and buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, without cost. This is free, the bread of life, the daily bread, the super substantial bread is free for each and every one of us. It's simple. Because our hunger is not merely a physical hunger, but it is our supplication. It is also for our strength of our spiritual life. And to truly understand this, we have it in today's reading from Philippians 4. Verses 4 to 9, rejoice. And the word rejoice means farewell. Not farewell as in bye-bye, see you, but to actually farewell, to do well. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Do you know what the Greek word is for thanksgiving? You good Anglicans should know this. We're going to have thanksgiving in a few moments. I can see some of you nodding your smiling faces because you know that Thanksgiving in Greek is Eucharistia, Eucharist. We're going to be celebrating Thanksgiving dinner with the Eucharist where we will take the bread, the body of Christ, and we will share it one with the other. We will take the cup, and today we will take the cup. Today I will come down here and I will serve bread to each and every one of you. And I'll use little tweezers and I'll be wearing my mask and I'll give you a piece of bread. But if you want to take one home, there'll be some still in the plastic package. And Steve will be standing beside me with the cup and I invite you to come up. And if you'd like to drink from the cup, it will be washed and clean and you can drink from the cup. But if you're still nervous as I would be nervous, can simply touch the cup, which is a sign of receiving the cup, which is receiving the cup of Christ, which is following the path of Christ in your life. So today, what better time of Thanksgiving dinner than for us to come up and gather at the front to receive the supernatural body of Christ and the bread of Christ, and to touch the cup, which is the path of Christ, and to give thanks for all that Jesus Christ has done and given to so many. But more than that, it's what this chap found. Jesus Christ healed 10 of them. He's walking through town and he sees these 10 lepers coming towards him. And they're keeping a distance because lepers had to do that. They had to yell out, unclean, unclean. How many of us still have that sense of uncleanliness for whatever reason? Everybody, no matter their stature, always has something. And they cried out to Jesus Christ for mercy that he would heal them. And he says simply, go and see the priests. Go and give thanks to the priests and you will be healed. Not unlike the story from 1 Kings of Naaman, the Syrian king who had leprosy. And I invite you to go and read that story. How he had to humble himself to go and be healed. But one of the ten similar to this congregation here for each and every one of you there's another nine out there wondering about whether they should come back to church and give thanks and once jesus realizes that this fellow this person who has been inflicted with this terrible debilitating disease has come forward because he has turned back praising god jesus says rise and go your faith has made you well Rise, each and every one of you today, as you receive the Eucharist, to go. Your faith has made you well. But your faith has made you more than well just in your physical. It's your spiritual. And it's the French that really says it, and that's why we put the French on here. Puis Jésus lui dit, Lève-toi, va. Ta foi t'a sauvé. Your faith has saved you. Your faith has saved you, and in this saving, you have received eternal life through receiving the bread of Christ and the cup of Christ, through following and receiving this cup and this bread each day that you read his word, that you praise his name, and you give thanks to the Almighty for your saving grace today and for always.
Let us stand together confessing our faith as we say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all the seeking now We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from God made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us in our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a part of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and seated at the right hand. He will come again in the world of the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has sold to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism of forgiveness of sins. We will look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated in prayer. We're not ten made clean. The other nine, where are they to return and praise God? One returns to give praise to God and is advised by Jesus to go on his way, for his faith made him well. We pray for the church, that the church may continue to be the guide to each of us in our lives, knowing that God comes from heaven and gives life to the world. Pray to God, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for an individual who returns to praise God. In our world, we can take for granted gifts given to us from God. The necessary step to take is to return to God and praise to Him for gifts supplied. Praying to God, Lord, hear our prayer. Nous prions pour tout le temps à prier à lui, Dieu. Père Bruy, joyeux au Seigneur, toute la terre, sachez que le Seigneur est Dieu. Il nous a créés et nous sommes admis. Nous sommes son peuple et les brebis de son pâturage. Car le Seigneur est bon, sa bonté dure à toujours. Prions pour le Seigneur, écoute nos prières. We pray for a rejoicing in the Lord. We stand and declare his gentleness to be known to everyone. Knowing the Lord is near helps us to know what is true, honorable, just, pure, and commendable. We are to keep on doing the things learned, received, and heard from God, and his peace will be with each one of us. Pray to God. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for our time of thanksgiving, that we may all be brought to be thankful for what you have given to each one of us. Help us to know our families, friends, co-workers, and all who have been placed along our individual paths by you. Praying to God, Lord, hear our prayer. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes all who return and invites them to his table. Let us now confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By the Lord we have done, and by the Lord we have done, we have not loved we have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We have not we have loved our neighbors to ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we hope in your hand. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may be like light to your own will, and walk in your way and your way. To the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm, strengthen you you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have come, come up unto the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give our thanks, thanks and praise. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, sustainer of the universe. You are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their forces, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. From the final elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us stewards of creation. Glory to you forever and ever. But we turn against you and betray your trust. And we turn against one another. Again and again, you call us to return. Through the prophets and sages, you reveal your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your son, born of a woman, to be our Savior. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. And by his death, he opened to us the way of freedom and peace. Glory to you forever and ever. Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with those of every generation who have looked to you and hoped to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. En l'enfant suprême, nous partageons le corps du Christ. Ensemble, nous le prenons qu'un seul corps, car nous partageons la même chose. Les dons de Dieu pour les peuples de Dieu. Nous rendons grâce à Dieu. Thank you. 
God of our hope, in this Eucharist we find the source of all your blessings. Nourished in these holy mysteries, may we, with our lives, give you continual thanks and praise. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Let us rejoice with thanksgiving, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. And now let us sing our closing hymn, number 259, for the fruit of all creation.